What's up guys, it's Kristen from Anime Collective. I know I promised you guys this unboxing a few weeks back, but with the news of Kentaro Miura's passing, I decided to push it back out of respect for his family and friends who are grieving his loss. I wanted to redo this introduction though, because while this statue already meant a lot to me with Berserk being my favorite manga, it has taken on a whole different meaning and has become something more that really celebrates the legacy that he's left behind. I will forever be grateful for everything he's given us over these many, many years, and he brought one of my favorite characters to life on Page Guts. Because Guts is one of my favorite characters, I decided to go with the one-third scale because I really wanted him to stand tall as the largest piece in my collection. Although I do have Prime 1 Studios Doom Slayer statue on the way, so that's gonna change soon, but with that said, he still really has a presence. This is a new favorite in the collection, and I can't wait to share this one with you guys. As always, we're gonna start things off showing closer looks at the pieces, then Brad's gonna assemble the statue, and then we'll do a showcase at the end. Let's get into it. So first off, let's take a look at the boxes. So this statue came shipped in a total of two boxes, one that included the base and another that included the rest of the pieces. The art boxes show an image of the statue, which looks absolutely menacing, and they also have one of my favorite Guts quotes on it. I went with the deluxe version because I had to have the two extra interchangeable portraits and the extra right arm display option for holding the Dragon Slayer sword up over his shoulder, and I also really love that it came with two pucks as well to display with him. So I was a little too anxious and took everything out of the box and forgot to get a shot of what everything looks like in the foam insert, but luckily, the assembly instructions that came with the statue has an image of what that looks like, so here's a quick look. There are two display options for Puck that come with the deluxe version. So the first shows him in his standard appearance and it looks just like him. This hand on hip pose they put him in shows him with a lot of attitude, which is a big part of his personality. The detail they achieved here, even though he is so small, is awesome from his facial features, especially his eyes, to his wings, which are transparent and have these butterfly-esque details throughout. Then you have his more chibi-like form, and he looks as adorable and comical as he does in the manga here. I love that they also included the burdock that he uses as a weapon, and you commonly see him whacking enemies with in this appearance. Puck always provides so much comic relief and has had me laughing more times than I can count. I love him as a character and I'm happy they included these display options of him with the deluxe version. Not sure Guts would be entirely happy that he followed him all the way into the Prime 1 studio box, but I sure am. Up next is his cape, which is made of fabric. Fabric is not something I'm used to seeing on statues as an anime statue collector, but I really wish this is something that would be incorporated on more statues, especially after seeing how great it looks on this one. One thing to note is that it takes some time to get all of the folds and drapes, particularly around his neck looking the way you want, but it adds so much to the statue once in position. It's also grungy with tattered and frayed edges that add even more to that heavily worn look. And this is his cannon arm. At the top, you have the shoulder armor that has always, in my opinion, had the appearance of dragon scales. And then you have this device that functions partly as a prosthetic arm, but also as a secret weapon. The hinges and springs look like they are functional and like they can move on this statue even though they can't. You can even see the opening of the cannon underneath his mechanical hand, which comes sculpted separately. The mechanical hand itself is made really well, and I love that they chose to display it with a clenched fist. The two interchangeable arms that hold the Dragon Slayer are what I'm going to show you guys next. The first interchangeable arm is a DX exclusive. It is shown with his arm back and up over his shoulder. I've never seen a statue with as realistic paintwork and texturing on the skin as this one. The veins and all of his muscles look absolutely amazing. Here's the second arm that comes with both the standard and DX versions. It's extending outward to hold his sword, which is lodged into the base. This one is just as incredible looking as the last with cuts all over it. I love this one especially because of all that blood splatter that's up his arm and on the bandaging. Both arms fit into the sockets perfectly and the seam lines are smartly hidden by the armor on his chest so they aren't visible. This statue also comes with two display options for the Dragon Slayer. The first Dragon Slayer is displayed in front of Guts. As you can also see, this one has a lot of blood stains on it, both new and old as shown by the different colors of the red they used. It has nicks and deans all over it too. They also added a piece of felt here so it doesn't mess up the paint where it keys into the base. It really looks like a heap of raw iron and it's massive looking like it should be. 
The next sword is a cleaner version. It still has some weathering details though and a slight stain tint to show that it's had blood on it at many points. The Nyx and Deans are present on this one also and this is another well-executed Dragon Slayer that comes with this statue. I'll probably be displaying him with a sword in front, but love that I can change up the display over time because both poses are powerful. There are two bandage pieces that came with the statue and key into the hilt of the Dragon Slayer. These came sculpted separately because they are more delicate pieces. This is the hand that covers the notch that holds the Dragon Slayer in the base. You'll only use this piece if you have him displayed with his Dragon Slayer over the shoulder, but this is a smart way to hide this area. And here's his knife that keys into his belt and came sculpted separately. This is one of those pieces that shows how well they achieved the look of all the different materials featured on him, from the metal to the bandaging to the leather. But what I really love about this piece is the look of the threads. It really looks as if it's been sewn together. Up next is Gut's body sculpt, and there is a lot going on here, and I couldn't be happier. I guess we'll start from the top here because there's a lot to look at. So I believe this is the armor and outfit we see him wearing in the Conviction arc. He is shown with his crisscross leather belt across his chest that holds all of his throwing knives, which are some of my favorite details on this statue. It even has metal buttons adorning it, and they are attached to his belt with these chains, which are painted to look somewhat weathered. The different textures on his outfit, from the metal of his armor to the leather straps and belts, and the chain and buckle details are all immaculately done. How they were able to achieve the look of all of these and painted and textured them in a way that makes them look real is amazing. His belt also has these metal studs on them and a lot of detail throughout. His pants have been painted to look like a shiny material, and you have more belt buckle details, and then you move down to his leg armor. All the dents and deans on them show they are worn from battle and the different metallic colors they painted them in from this silver to like this darker gunmetal color show even more wear and tear while adding some highlights that allow them to stand out even more. They have an amazing sheen in the light that gives them the effect of real metal. And finally we have his boots. They achieve this frayed leather look and then you have more armor atop them and the paintwork is just as awesome here as it was above. His back has just as much detail. You have more leather straps and holsters and mini chains and these individual links that eventually hook into this large strap that holds the Dragon Slayer. You also have a lot of pouches and bags back here with more of that leather texturing. Next, I'm going to show you guys the head sculpts. So the deluxe version comes with four head sculpts in total. The standard version comes with the first two I'm showing you, but the final two are exclusive to the deluxe. First off, we have this portrait with a more stoic, grimace-like expression. I want to talk about some of the details here because this is above and beyond anything I've seen for a portrait. The texturing on the skin, the gloss of his eye, and the slight shading they added to them. They even added his details like the scar across his nose. Everything just looks so real and the way they sculpted all of these spikes in his hair too is absolutely phenomenal. Then you have the brand of sacrifice on his neck and the way they did this makes it look as if it really is branded into his skin. The second one features a half smirk expression that looks as if he is somewhat wincing. Same quality as seen with the first, but you get to see some of the incredible work they've done on his teeth here. Also guys, look at his eyebrows. Didn't know I'd admire someone's work on eyebrows, but man, they really hit everything dead on here and put every single detail on this statue. Also, this portrait is the only one that shows the brand of sacrifice with blood dripping down it. The main reason I had to have the deluxe version is for this next portrait. When I think of Guts, this is the expression that first pops into my mind. That maniacal, reckless look as if he is staring death and adversity in the face and laughing at it. The look of the teeth look absolutely incredible, even more so than the one I just showed you prior. This is definitely the portrait I'm going to display him with. And finally, we have another stoic expression that seems to be a slightly less furrowed, tilted version of the first portrait I showed you guys, and his pupils are facing more to the right in this one. Up next is the bust stands. I'm going to show you one of the bust stands up close, but it comes with three. The portraits rest atop this armor detail, so they look great on display next to the statue since they have similar paint and detailing as the base. Here's a quick look at what the portraits look like displayed on the bust stands. I love all of the display options, which show a different variation of Gut's personality, and I'm impressed with how they were able to get the likeness spot on on not just one or two portraits, but four of them. And finally, we have the base. I really enjoy the look of this base because it's not so much a base as it is like a pedestal. It's made to look like or allude to the Berserker armor, and it has all of these weathering and battle damage details on it. I really love that the metallic silver color of the metal is coming through in some areas so that it adds some highlighting to the base. And the texturing they achieved and the way they layered the armor on the base looks really nice, and then it almost claws up over the top where Gut stands in this gruesome pool of blood. The smaller ones came sculpted separately and key onto these notches. I'm glad they did this because these are more fragile. 
You also have the brand of Sacrifice front and center. It looks as if it is carved into this piece and it really looks even more incredible when lit up and it has this pulsing effect which you guys will see even further in the showcase. All of the lights can be turned on with a button that's hidden in the back and are powered by four batteries that are hidden behind the brand of Sacrifice badge. The pool of blood atop it is made out of clear resin which has been painted in this deep red color. It has this swirling effect throughout which hides the LEDs they have installed underneath. And you also have these three skinless corpses. These look absolutely gnarly and grisly with their veins and the glossy paint they've added make that skinless look appear even more realistic. As far as bases go, this is my favorite in my collection so far. It just ties everything in so well and gives Guts a glorious platform to stand upon. As Brad's assembling, I want to talk about shipping and my thoughts on this statue real quick. So I didn't pick up this statue from Prime 1 directly. I actually got mine through Comic Concepts. I usually pick up all of my licensed statues from them because they're cheaper shipping and they have great customer service. I've linked to them in the description in case you want to check them out, but it's not an affiliate link or anything. I just wanted to mention them for anyone who buys from studios like Prime 1, Figurama, and Sume, since they are a good site to buy from, especially if you're shipping to the U.S. This is my first statue from Prime 1, and the way they package their statues is above and beyond anything I've seen before. The most secure and well thought out packaging I've ever seen. The pieces were even wrapped in this satin-like fabric instead of the tissue paper I commonly see used, so I am thoroughly impressed with the shipping and packaging. The only pieces on the whole statue that can be a little difficult to key in are his cape and puck, which you'll see on display in the showcase. But everything is secure and fits perfectly, so no complaints at all in terms of assembly. This is actually the only statue in my whole collection I'm not concerned about in the least bit. This statue is a new favorite in Brad and I's collection, and we are happy to have a statue that not only does one of the greatest characters of all time justice, but celebrates a series that has had a huge impact on us. I remember the feeling I had when I opened up and started reading Berserk for the first time and I will never forget it. I couldn't put it down and I was in awe of how amazingly detailed his art, the best drawn battles I've ever seen by the way, and how beautifully he crafts his story and how masterfully the characters in the story develop and how emotionally invested he had me in their stories. To me, this statue really embodies Guts' unwavering spirit and brings all of that amazing detail and art you see in Berserk into statue form. One thing to note is that the magnet that attaches this arm into the socket is really strong, which is great, but be careful when you get close to it because it will forcefully pull you in. This piece isn't going anywhere when it's in, even though it holds the weight of the Dragon Slayer. <laughs> 